What's up, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It's time for a recap of what went down on last night's episode of Teen Mom OG. So last night's episode of OG kicked off with Cheyenne um, and Zach talking about feeling a lot of pressure from their families to get married now that she's pregnant by Zach. So, you know, she is talking about how she wishes that they were at the very least engaged. And I really think that that's going to be the surprise of the season. She managed to hide her pregnancy quite well. So who's to say that they aren't already engaged or maybe even married at the this point and Lord even her man's dad is fine I can't thank her enough for all of the visual beauty her scenes give us so um, he's talking to them at this restaurant about putting the cart before the horse as in getting pregnant before getting engaged or married and it wasn't a light like nudge about it like he was very serious about like being disappointed in them going quote-unquote backwards I do have to say that I'm glad to see parents starting to push back against these teen mom girls popping out babies with you know every Tom Dick and Harry I know Zach's been in Cheyenne's life for years, but they have never been able to sustain a long lasting relationship. So maybe this wasn't the greatest idea. Meanwhile, in Michigan, it is election season. So Tyler talks about how it's about to be his first time voting. I personally would be too embarrassed to admit that in public if I had waited this long to vote. And it turned out that it was also his mom's first year of voting, which is very odd to me because on the lead up to going over to Kim's house, Caitlin talked about how she had very strong political beliefs. How do you have strong political beliefs? beliefs yet never vote and you're like 50 something years old. Kim talks about how she wanted to vote for Trump because she felt as though he was doing a great job and she was scared of socialism and communism. Again, I'm sorry, but why is it always the poorest and least educated people who are the scaredest of socialism? Like it's literally to help people like you and the kids that you have that you can't afford. Things really start to heat up in Indiana when Amber cancels on seeing Leah because she was awaiting the result of her COVID test after allegedly experiencing COVID symptoms to me, the COVID symptom that Amber probably was experiencing was fatigue. You know, she just didn't feel like doing it. And so she talks about how Leah called her really upset about the cancellation and how she also unloaded about how upset she's been with Amber over the years for letting men take precedence over her. And we actually see a clip of Amber kicking Leah out of the house super young when she came over with Gary, you know, to spend some time with Amber. Matt was there. And then Amber asked her, like, you know, about like staying the night while Matt was there or whatever and Leah was quite uncomfortable with it she looked to be about what like five years old at this point and Amber was so pissed off that she was basically well like well you can go back home then if you don't want to be around Matt which was just yikes 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 then we saw another example of it when she was dating Andrew in that very short-lived relationship I don't know why but something happened with Leah and Amber said that she was being a butthole and then Andrew claimed that Leah was being ridiculous like she allowed him to trash talk her daughter and um, again, it's not hard to see why Leah resents her, you know, I, I don't even want to say mother because th that's an insult to mothers, uh, whatever Amber's relationship is to Leah. Now, um, in Florida, Josh actually comes down to the state to visit Mackenzie and the kids and he immediately starts complaining about a headache and um, she just wasn't having it. She was like, really, dude, you just got here and you're already complaining about something. Then we head over to Tennessee where one of Macy's friends calls her to tell her about Larry talking to the press and claiming that she's been keeping Bentley from them. This shocks Macy because as far as she's concerned, nothing changed as far as her relationship with Jen and Larry. And she hadn't been, you know, as far as she was aware, keeping Bentley from them. In fact, she allowed Bentley to go over to their house for Jagger's birthday party. Um, she actually calls it an attempt to get attention from her. And she's like, listen, if I went to the press with the tea that I have, you guys would never leave your house again. And who Lord, I really do hope that one day she just goes in and let's have on them because they have been, you know, pushing their boundaries with her for a very long time. So we are back up north in Michigan again when Caitlin goes to see Tyler's mom and her husband at, um, I don't know, this outdoor place or whatever. And uh, she was wearing a Black Lives Matter shirt. And I just laugh because I'm uncomfortable at the way that her mother's like spell, I don't know if it's a husband, husband or boyfriend or whatever talk to her he's like are you really wearing that here and I was just like oh my god like this is just so wildly like racist that like she could wear a shirt that literally says something as simple as black lives matter and 
it would upset someone. Like, I, you know, I, I felt so uncomfortable watching that, I have to say. And so she proudly says, yeah, because she supports the Black Lives Matter movement. And he kind of just like ignores it and carries on. And um, by the way, he was wearing a Trump hat. And um, when she got back home, she told Tyler about the way that her mom's partner disliked her shirt. And then Tyler's like, you know what? Tell him next time to call me, you know, as if to say, instead of confronting my wife about her shirt. And I really like that from Tyler. A couple states over in Indiana, Gary and Christina talk about Leah unloading on Amber about being a crappy mom. And, you know, he's like, I spoke to Amber about it. And then Christina talks about how Leah has been feeling rejected by Amber over the years with all the boyfriends and stuff going on. And then Gary says, I called Amber out for never seeing Leah when she was dating the, you know, all of those guys when she was with them. She just would not make time for her daughter. And then he compares it to his own sad relationship with his mom, who was a thought just like Amber putting men above her kids. And then he also says that he told Amber to start coming around for Leah instead of just James. Which to me proves that Amber, you know, this whole like fake sister wives thing is not because they've got this amazing relationship or whatever. It's because Amber is using them to babysit her son, James, you know? In fact, Gary literally spells it out when he says, you know, Amber needs to start coming around just to see Leah more, you know, not just to pick up uh, James. And I was like, hold up, wait a minute. Why would a mother be going to someone else's house on a regular basis just to pick up a child unless it was a home daycare or something like that? Very, very odd. So it seems as though she leaves them with James like throughout the days and then comes back just to pick him up. And it it's mind boggling to me that she is fighting Andrew for James to stay in Indiana when it's clear as day that she's not even really spending that much time with the child. You know, it, it seems as though Gary and Christina are the ones raising James for her. Going back down to Tennessee, Larry confesses to Jen that he spoke to a reporter about his relationship with Bentley and Macy, and then Jen asks why he did that. And he's like, well, I don't like being mean. She just kept on calling me. And it's like, really? As if you dragging Macy's name in the mud is not being mean? And why don't you just block this woman's number so that you don't even hear the calls and have to feel awkward about like picking it up or whatever? Jen tells him, listen, stop talking to the tabloids because it could ruin our relationship with Macy, which would ruin our relationship with Bentley. It's not worth it. I've never had a desire to talk to the tabloids. I expect you to stop doing it as well. Um, so on the flip side of this, um, in Florida, Mackenzie talks to her friend about how great Josh is being with the kids and stuff. And the friend was like, listen, Josh is always like this. You know, like he'll treat you like crap and he'll come back, be the best husband or best dad ever, then go back to treating you like crap again. So like, let's not, you know, get all too excited about what it is that he's doing here, the bare minimum. And um, um, you know, I have to say, I really loved her friend setting her straight on that. I love friends who tell the truth, you know, because we did see this play out with Josh and Mackenzie over the years. Remember the like treasure hunt, like new wedding ring situation thing just for him to turn back around and end up in this place? Back down in LA again, Cheyenne lets us know in yet another voiceover that she and Zach are feeling a lot of pressure from their families to get married. So what are they doing now? They're shopping for an engagement ring. They do an, a virtual concert consultation with a jeweler to look at rings in the $60,000 range. I'm sorry, but these are not the things that make up a, a marriage or whatever. I feel like if they really wanted to get married, they would just do it. You don't need this grand proposal. You don't need this grand ring or anything like that. You just need the will to do it and a courthouse to sign the papers at and then worry about like, you know, the ring and the wedding and all that later on. And on top of that, they seem to only be looking because their families are upset about, you know, the second out of wedlock baby for Cheyenne. And a $60,000 ring when Zach has like an undefined career and Cheyenne is just on reality television is very ridiculous, especially with the second child on the way. She later goes out to lunch with her dad and you know, I was in total agreement with everything he said about, you know, forget the ring. Like you can get married and worry about all of that later. But I do have to say that I didn't agree with him tricking her mom um, with a, a cubic zirconium ring. Listen, there's nothing wrong with a CZ ring if that's what you want, but a According to the dad, the mom was under the impression that it was a diamond ring. And so like that to me is weird and shady. Now, um, back in Michigan again, it turns out that it was also Caitlin's first time voting, which, you know, again, I would not admit in public. And it made me kind of like roll my eyes at the little speech she gave earlier in the episode about like women not having the right to vote and like the historic nature of it all. It's like, listen, you had the opportunity to vote in two very 
historic elections prior when uh first of all primaries with obama versus hillary clinton if you want to be on that woman wave why didn't you vote for hillary then um or you you know or you could have voted for the first biracial president as well you chose to sit that out and um, then second it was hillary versus donald trump like if you're really as pro women as you're claiming right now maybe it would have been better to vote in that election too because that was a huge game changer for everybody and you sat that out too so mm, save spare me that speech that you gave i do have to say though that it was great that they brought the kids and then nova helped her fill in her ballot to vote and then they talked about the importance of it a little bit later on and nova said that she wanted to vote too in the future in indiana again amber needs advice on mending her relationship with leah so she sits down with her mom who has stolen over like thirty thousand dollars from her over the years uh by the way you guys is amber on drugs because she's been seeming high as a kite for at least the past three episodes that i've been catching up on she did actually take responsibility for letting her child feel like a third wheel in her relationships and and then she reveals that Leah t has since told her that, you know, she wants to see her on her own kind of time schedule. And Amber's like, listen, I'm still your mom. So chillax with all of that. Her mom kind of says, listen, like Leah just needs to feel like you're there for her. And this is where Amber kind of starts talking about Farah, where she's like talking about other people, but it's obviously talking about her own child. You know what I mean? She's like, I've always been there for Leah. And you know, if people don't understand that people being Leah, then it's not my problem anymore. Big yikes. But thankfully tanya tells her listen your child will always be your problem down south in tennessee unabomber ryan i've been calling him unabomber but not posting the photo guys look at this photo does ryan not look like this damn unabomber when he was caught um and black widow mac talk about larry running to the press about bentley and mackenzie's like you know macy would be a petty bitch if she retaliated and i was like why are you calling macy names here like it's amazing how the young woman who was called names like completely on provoked in the press is already being called a petty bitch for something she hasn't even done. Meanwhile, the 60 something year old man gets off scot-free despite disrespecting the mother of his grandchild like that like oh my god the pick me of it all you know so speaking of macy she talks to her husband taylor about the situation and taylor calls jen and larry delusional idiots and uh he also calls jen out for telling bentley that not seeing ryan you know without the therapy thing remember that was the ultimatum that bentley had for ryan she told him that that was going to hurt Ryan's feelings and Taylor was upset. He's like, it's not Bentley's problem. He's a child and Ryan's a grown man who's never been there for him. Macy says that she's not going to retaliate against Larry because she doesn't want Bentley's relationship with the grandparents to be impacted based on her own personal feelings with them. But she actually drops a really big tidbit here. You guys, she says that she thinks that Bentley is going to eventually cut off the Edwards one day, you know, on his own. And I wouldn't blame him. They're very toxic and weird. Now, in the final scene of the episode, it's important to Cheyenne that Zach gets her a $60,000 ring and marry her before the baby comes. By the way, she's almost three months along, but don't worry. She doesn't want things to feel rushed. How do you do all of that and in, in the span of a couple of months and it not feel rushed, sis? She talks about wanting to stop disappointing her family with these um, out of wedlock uh, pregnancies. And honestly, it made me really sad. It seems as though she hasn't gotten to enjoy her pregnancy without all of the judgment and nagging from both of their families and you know again it doesn't seem like a very well thought out relationship or pregnancy to me it seemed like a revenge pregnancy against Corey and Taylor for having Mila she's like well Ryder's got a sibling over there I got to give her one over here so let me go back to the guy who will always come back to me no matter what and just get pregnant and hope it all works out you know what I mean like I think that there's going to be a lot of resentment and an overwhelming feeling of failure clouding this relationship for as long as as it lasts, unfortunately. Um, anyway, you guys, that does it a recap of what went down on last night's episode of Teen Mom OG. But as usual, I'm more looking forward to what, hearing what you have to say about everything. So please make sure to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And we'll chat. Take care, you guys, and I'll see you in my next video.